performance was top notch. And again, they showed that, that character that could that could make them, you know, the party spoilers. And they really, really are a party spoiler uh, in this in this league. They are looking so good, and I love the, the attitude. Nobody is now saying that it was a fluke. Oh, they won away. Now they they're winning away. They're drawing at the big venues, the big clubs. So that mentality of they're small boys, they're academy boys. I don't think we can talk about that no, anymore. No, no, it's, it's no more there. I mean, you talk to their head coach, uh, Prosper Nate Ogum, right. and he says, look, I'm a psychologist, okay? And all that I've done on these boys is to make sure psychologically they are there. First of all, when they are going to play out, 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 away from home, they look, they look like we are afraid. They look terrible in their attitude. They, they always fumble under pressure. And, you know, when, when their supporters roar at them, they get confused. Now this man there, Prosper Nete, is saying, look, go there, play above yourself. No, expect the intimidation. And for the intimidation, it should push you there. It should make you play above yourself. And Wafa is so confident. And this young chap, talk about Kudedu Yadom. Talk about Abu Bakari, Ibrahim at the back. They have look a solid pair. You talk about in the middle where they have uh, Auguste Boachi, they have uh, um, uh, Agbevo. These boys are wonderful. Enoki Subonting. You know, they, they, they really know how to play big matches. And they are showing that character that, that will make everybody look at them and say, hey, we are not going to underrate you. Mm, very interesting indeed. And of course, Kotoko now um, in second position behind Accra has a folk. It, it's, it's what a lot of neutrals would want. Those who claim they're not for Kotoko, they're not for Hearts. This is what they love. But for Kotoko fans, they're saying that it's okay. We want to be behind and we will catch up and take our place back. Hearts of Oak are occupying that spot <laughs> temporarily. The Phobians, meanwhile, are saying that now we're on top, there's no going back. Very interesting. Yeah, the, the dynamics are very, very different here. You know, Hearts of Oak have won more matches than Kumasi and Santi Kodoko this season. Hearts have won 13, Kodoko have won 12. Again, Hearts have scored more goals than Kotoko this season. Hearts have scored 35, Kotoko has, have scored 29. The only thing Kotoko has better than Hearts of Oak is about goals conceded. And Kotoko are the best team defensively in the league. They have only conceded 14 goals and has have conceded 18 goals. So we can say that, look, if you're talking about Barreto, if you're talking about Buedu, why don't you chip in the name of uh, Prosper Ugun as well? Well, Nete is doing so well. Um, you look at how he has raised the bar in terms of getting the Wafa boys into shape and into form. They look so solid. And, and yeah, just look at Wafa on the leg lock. They are on the eighth position. The last three matches, they've not lost a single game. In their last away matches, the three away matches Wafa has played, they've not lost. And that is great. You know, they, they, they look so solid. The goal difference is helping them. So uh, above Adriana Stars. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. That is it. So, you, and, and you see, one thing about Wafa is that they are now showing that glimpses of we can play better than playing at home. Right. We, we all know what, what for when they play at the Suga Kope Park, they are, they, they, that's a waterloo for people to go there and, and they suffer losses, heavily losses at, at that venue. But again, they are showing that, look, when we go away from home, we are more comfortable, we are not panicking, we are not under pressure, we are not intimidated. And that's how these young chaps play very well. Look, for Tosuche, 28-year-old guy, I mean, you, we reckon Wafa, the problem they had was when they lost Lomote. Hmm. They needed somebody, a goal poacher, who can hold on to the ball, who can fill in those spaces when the loopholes, you know, come around and those pockets of chances are converted. And they brought him from second D, Hazakis. What was the term Barretto used for this goal? He said nonsense goal, right? Yes, he did. Nonsense goal because he... Look at, look at the, the positioning of his players, the defenders. And sometimes we've seen this with Kotoko defenders. You can't really expect to get any sort of defensive line against a striker when you're so far away from him. He should have been tight. Well, first of all, you 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 will look at that move, and it was a long kick from um, Borte, that that midfield general for Wafa, and he sent that long ball trying to look for the head of Tosuche. Now look at this. Kotoko had one, two, three, four, five defenders around the eighteen yard box, with only two of Wafa players in the eighteen. In fact, three of the Wafa players in the 18-yard box, and then one outside. Now, look at Tosuche. He had anticipated that cross, and Habib Muhammad, who should have been the stopper, who should have been the, the man marking Tosuche, was, was nowhere to be found. And Tosuche, what a great header. There was power, there was direction, and, and he looked, you know, look at it, do look at it again, yeah. Very powerful. The goalkeeper, I mean, look, and an, an tried, but there was no way he was going to get... Look at the long pass again from Borti. And look at it. Bam!
Brilliant pinpoint cross. Exactly. That's I, a brilliant assist. I mean, you love that assist. And strikers love such assists. Brilliant. But the defenders will be wondering, what, why do you leave this guy to, you know? I mean... On his own. In a normal circumstance, you have Ganyu and Habib in there. And they are, they are two tall defenders. Again, when Habib had moved forward, there were two Wafa players just around that, lurking around that area, Agbevo, and of course, um, the guy who scored the goal, Tosuche. Then you expect Habib Muhammad to be very close to, to Tosuche because look at Tosuche. He's also a little bit lanky, taller, just like Habib. And so if he should get to the ball first before Habib, then he could cause havoc. And rightly so, that pass, that long pass from Bote, it got straight directly. It was a pinpoint cross, a very perfect one. And Bote had to just direct it with power. If you look at the defensive line, and also even you have Fabio going in there, tactically, Kotoko had men there in a the box, but it didn't help them. Wafa already had two men in the box and two outside. Yeah. They still scored. So, so that's why Barreto thinks it's a lack of attitude. It's, yeah. it's a nonsense, nonsense goal, goal. To, to concede. Especially, he, he used his own words. Yes. I mean, he said it's a nonsense goal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just there with seconds for the referee to whistle for the, the end of the half. first half. And, and where, was, where, where was the focus? The Kotoko people were like, oh, look, we, we are done and dusted with the first half. We are going up, so we're going to go back into the uh, dressing room and come back, re, re, you know, come back and win the game. But, hey, it's not over until it's over. And mm -hmm. that long cross should tell Kotoko, look, you need to watch, I need to look at. And Barato was so shocked because, look, it was from a throw-in. They throw the ball and, you know, they got to Bote and Bote had that vision to locate, to switch her with that, that stupendous pass. And what for I'm... me, Kotoko was asleep. They'll still be looking to go up. Eight matches to go. Let's take a look at Mariano Barreto. He's of, obviously out of town. The reason being given is that is, uh, he's asked for time out. He will return. you have anything different? Yeah, yeah. He's going to Portugal to renew his uh, coaching licenses. You know, in Portugal, just after every season, they will have to renew, you know, the coaching certificate. And he is on the UEFA Pro, I, I guess. So he's going there to... to um, get it uh, uh, redone again. He will be back very soon. And look, he's coming back to lead Kotoko to, to Doma. He is back because, look, he's going there just for two days and will be back in no time. And I'm told he'll be back on Thursday and then he will fly with the Kotoko, in fact, he will move with the Kotoko team to Doma. And so... Tough game. I mean, it's a tough game. He wants to be there. He wants to, to, to be the man to direct the players. He felt like, look, it was a game they should have lost. Don't forget... Kotoko have drawn back to back, and it's not good for them. Mourinho once said, I would love to lose than to, win, to, to draw back to back. Because look, if you draw back to back, let's say three times, it's three points. If, if I lose one, two and I win one, that's three points. It's three points. So, right. so he would want to lose than even go for back to back to back draw. And that is what Kotoko are doing. It's not good for them. They need to, to keep form, keep momentum. They need to grind results. They are not doing it at the moment. They went to Liberty at the Sugar Cup Park. They, they, they were like Kadesika. You didn't see that Kotoko that played very well. They are not moving the ball faster as, as you want. They are not passing to Andy Kumi as quickly as possible for him to finish. And for me, they are losing key players who can square balls, who can give assists, like um, Augustine Okra is always getting injured. Emmanuel um, Jelfi, today is good. Tomorrow is not there. And there's one player I love to see all the time at, at Kotoko. Budasiru? Budasiru. I thought as much. He, he's the angel. He's the moving force in the middle. And he plays but he the started heart. the season a bit tentatively. He's picked up really well now. Of course. I mean, for a player like him, we saw the talent in him. He, he, I, I love how he manages to know the area and the, the terrain that he's in. In the middle, he doesn't lose too many of the balls. He works harder. He fights for the ball. And he drives the team forward. And that's, that's what I've loved about him. And can you imagine he's not in the, any of the national teams at this moment? Why? I don't know. For me, he's, he's one player. I should have been in, uh, with the national under-23 team or probably have a stick with the Black Star. He's playing so well. The Could it be that the, 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 his injury issues have worried him in the past? They just want him to be consistent and stable and then perhaps he'll get that call. I, I think he has been in form now. He has been very, very consistent. I mean, you, you look at the last five matches Kotoko have played. He has been the hero in the middle. He has been the player who has the driving force and he's moving the team. Needs to add goals to his game. Let's take a look at uh, Accra as a folk who are leading now and their fans are ecstatic. Social media is a buzz with Hearts fans. Where were they before? They were very quiet. <laughs> Suddenly, they're everywhere saying they've won the league. It's a bit premature, though. Well, this man is doing the magic, Samuel Buedu. He's turning things around. And um, after 
probably a shaky start away. His philosophy is working now? His, his philosophy is working. He seems to What have, is his philosophy? Well, he feels like, look, make sure your boys have the momentum and the focus to win every game. He feels like psychologically, his team must be mentally tough. I mean, playing home away from home, they need to show, you know, that boldness. They need to show that composure and they will win games. And look at him here. They busted against um, 11 Wonders. They had so many chances at the beginning before Wonders settled into the game. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, anytime you play Wonders at the Ohinia Mayor Park, Wonders are unpredictable there. When they want to probably pin you down, Wonders can play very well there. And against Hasofo, look at it here. That, that, that howl of a mistake. From Tetenotti. How lot of a mistake mm. or a very, what's the word? There's a word they use for strikers like this. Luis Suarez is often used, you know, go poacher. Mm. He he stole that from nothing. Well, you see, just before that goal, Yao, Hasso folk were pressing very well. You love the press. Whenever they teach him, I love one defenders had the ball. They press so well, and, and that press resulted in that howler from Tetenotti. But of course, this will be uh, that moment where the ball struck the hand of uh, um, Very much talked about. And you know the interesting thing? Mm. The experts are divided. The media is divided. The fans are divided. So let's leave it like that and learn about it. Yeah. We hope to get yeah. um, head of referees Alex Cote in the studio mm. to mm. educate us mm. on why it was a goal. Oh, sorry, why it wasn't a handball mm. or why it was a handball and a penalty was not given. So hopefully he'll clarify that for us. But clearly it hit his hand. Mm. But the interpretation are different. of... Yes, yeah. it hit his hand, yes. Yeah. But... Is it a handball? Right, it's a, the, the, <laughs> I mean, the, the, you look at the new FIFA rules, Yao, and, and see, I've seen these handballs being given before. Obviously, so many times. Okay, so, so now the dynamics have changed. They want to see the hand above a certain level. Now, with this incident, you see Robert Adosoa, and his hand was not too far away from the body. And probably that is where I got it wrong. That is where we are always you know, in the haste to say it is a penalty. We learn from mistakes, yeah. And I have learned quite a number mm. of uh, um, tricks or probably rules right. from, from all these things. So, Were you also, uh, what's the word to use, uh, swayed by the fact that one hand was behind his back? Why not both hands? Exactly, yeah. And you see, in modern-day football, we've seen defenders go into a tackle in the 18-yard box with both hands at the back. You record or realize or remember when has a folk played against Elmina Sharks at the Accra Sports Stadium? When that ball was hit and it was going towards goal, the Elmina Sharks defender, Ajay, who was trying to stop the ball, had his, both of his hands at the back. Why wouldn't he have it, you know, just around him? I, 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 know, of, I know of that rule. But I, hey, we learn from mistakes, okay? We keep learning. Yeah. Interesting indeed. All right, so let's talk about the goal itself and, and, and the fact that, you know, we should give more credit to the striker and less to the so-called mistake, because he anticipated very smart. Yes, and Kojo Abi Jr. has scored seven goals. That was, his, that, that was his seventh goal of the season. He's that man when he scores, has a folk do not lose. I've been saying this all the time. And you will not love him because he's tall, he's lanky, he's cool, <laughs> but very skillful. I like the cool part. <laughs> right. And, and you see him here. Look at him here. No danger. The three defenders seem to... If, in fact, there's a four, one, two, three, four mm. defenders, mm. right? They yeah. seem to be in control. There's no danger. But watch him. He anticipates. He thinks ahead. And this is vision. This player has no right to be thinking that, hold on, these guys may get it wrong. I'm going to be in the right place at the right time to tap it in. We must give him credit. Now, watch him. Now, let's hold it here. Now, if you can come back a little bit. Right. If you see that go again here. No danger. Now, now, after the ball has bound, let's hold it here. L let's see the bounce. Yes, let's hold it here. Straight. Now, now, yeah. Key fact here. Look at the defenders, four defenders of 11 one less. And the goalkeeper. The first one, who's the captain, Rashid, was walk walking, thinking Norte was going to head the ball back to the goalkeeper. So he was comfortable. Now, just look at that second player behind... Norte, he also feel, oh, Norte was going to head the ball back to the goalkeeper. But there was a constant factor here, which was the pressing. And just a moment before this, Hasso folk were pressing high and putting pressure on the defense. And now you will see the goal scorer here, that is um, uh, Kojo B Jr. And look at the fighting spring. He, was, he, had, he had the focus, he, he, he had the pressure to chase for that ball. This is so, what you so look say, at him here. he had no right. Look at him here. He, he was still chasing for that ball, pushing pressure. And Norte didn't know he was just right behind him. And he still kept going. He kept going. Now, 
now hold it here. Hold it here. Just before Note chested the ball. Why didn't Rashid? He was and together with the other, other, other defenders tell Note to hand the ball because Kojo uh, Abidjina um, was right behind. This is what they called, and the striker ghosted into <laughs> the penalty area. Yeah, and he didn't ghost He ghosted in because yeah. they, they didn't cite him. But obviously, communication error there among the defenders because Rashid could have spoken to Note, hand the ball back to goalkeeper, or the goalkeeper could have even said, Note, hand the ball back to me. You know, miscommunication there, giving. Uh, Kojo Obi Jr. But Kojo Obi Jr., great poacher. And uh, he had already looked at the position of the goalkeeper. All that he needed to do was just not the ball passing, and it was a goal. Okay. Well, he must be given credit for that. Another goal to his uh, Arsenal. That gives him seven in the season and a well-taken goal. If Luis Suarez had done this, they'll be telling you a great goal. <laughs> All right, let's go for a quick break. When we come back, we continue on the GPL headquarters. I'm here with the one and only prof, Jude Echampo. We'll be right back. My friends wonder why I love buying TCL air conditioners. One, energy efficiency. TCL air conditioners use less power to operate, so every via no electricity bills new work from. And Unti, it helps me save some money. Two, the cooling ability. Hmm, what an inframmer. So clean and hygienic. It will live very quick at any selected temperature. Noise level no so daffem. Wow. I could even hear the sound of the pin drop. Now, because noise level new work from Tino, one always enjoys a good sleep. Above all, TCL air conditioners are of the best quality, dependable and durable. And you also call TCL air conditioners are three star rated with three years warranty. TCL, the creative life. Obufia for your damn ass. See a buy in chair and magia too. You didn't check it. See any free max 89.7 FM and a bremo. You didn't do nothing that quite jesty. If you do other ecosystem fiada, abo nundo ecosystem dominu. You did a good year some year to do max sports park air bro. You did pin four kuku dan and a bubble fiya. Mama bubble go in some many. And the mekao say max sports park abba abetuna max 89.7 FM. Ah, wait TV this. I tell you, someone could buy better TV. Charlie, we could go see chairman. Charlie, which kind of TV be this? The viewing quality be lit. If you be that, for this TV, your graphics will be massive. Kill let TV. Improve vividness, color intensity of images, truly stunning picture with refresh rate of up to 120 hertz, HDR10 plus, double vision. It delivers high levels of contrast and brightness. Giving truly bright pictures, massive forgiveness, and movie lovers. Ah, your chairman gets this here. I'll watch this. Hey, Google, turn off. Hey, Google, turn on. Chairman! For more information, call 0202 698 398 or 0596 913 298. TCL, the creative life.
It's your official centre for the Ghana Premier League. Jude, yeah. what do you think? So far, so good. All the centres are bubbling with the fans back. Well, you, you go to the centres, yeah, and uh, you love what the supporters are doing. I mean, the Palugo is back. The colourful nature is there. But one thing is they are always behind their team. I mean, I saw how so folk in Bichim, and when it was tough, the fans kept singing, ah, rose, ah, rose, ah, rose. And you could feel the spirit in which the boys wanted to do something. Against, um, against Elmina Sharks at the post Stadium, it was so, I mean, such a difficult game. And here, Hasso Folk went to the Nana Fosujia Ball Park, and you see Salifu here, and the supporters were roaring. They were cheering and chanting. The and atmosphere was there. I mean, it was buzzing with, with a lot of uh, excitement and the energy. I mean... Anytime you see, look at it, look at the fans there, look, look at it there. Look, look. And they behave themselves. They really do behave Most themselves. Most importantly, I mean, they behave themselves. And that's what, what I love to see about supporters going to the stadium. They are comporting themselves. They are going through the protocols and they are well seated only to cheer their team. And for me, that, that's, that's a plus sign. I think they've learned lessons where their club may be banned or punished yeah. if they misbehave. Yeah, and, and, and realize at their cross post stadium, when House of Folk played against Elmina Sharks, yeah, it was, it was a very tough game. As the folk were really strong, they were really having a bad day. But the supporters kept singing and kept cheering. Just to push him. There was not that booing, that, right. that insults, that... Come on. Talking about behaving, there's one coach who's actually caught the imagination and limelight on several occasions by his outbursts, his body language and his whatever he's at. That's Coach Ignatius. And after the defeat to Hearts of Oak, we were expecting something. Um, again, he didn't boom. This is what he had to say after the game. I think tactically we beat them. We also, they were only ballooning the ball. They did not pass from first half to second half. I felt House of Oak was a possessive team. The coach keeps on talking about he possessing, but we never saw that thing. You were, you were, you were in the commentary, and you never saw House of Oak make two passes together. But it's just that we gave them a goal away. And then I talked about referee not taking away the shine. For me, from where I was sitting, and from the replay I saw from start times, that is a penalty on any day. And I'm surprised that a FIFA referee of that caliber will not see it. This is what I was calling for. I said we should not be discussing the game. We should be discussing the game, not referee incident. You were on the commentary, I think you saw it better than I did. So you'll be able to talk about it. I see. I think we have enough steam to be fighting. You saw us play in the second half. We kept on trying. We kept on pushing, but that's part of the game. If you miss chances, you are not supposed to be scoring. We kept on missing chances. We are not patient in front of goal. We we'll work on that more, and hopefully in our next matches, it will come. Coach Ignatius is a very interesting man. We need, we need to grab him in the studio one of these days and have a one-on-one -on -one with him. He's lost, but he's moving on. Talking about moving on, is uh, Coach Boedu, he's moving up. In fact, he is up top of the Ghana Premier League, and his numbers speaks for itself. Uh, you can see that um, they don't lie. He says he has a philosophy, and his team is gradually beginning to buy into his philosophy. You can't dispute that if you're top of the league and you're winning. Nobody can dispute the fact that your philosophy isn't working. The question is... What is his philosophy? Well, the, we, we, will, we will get to know the philosophy whilst he's winning. And the, the fans will cheer up, will, will move with that, with that philosophy. But the question I'm asking is, where was Hassel Folk before he came into the team? Mm. Hassel Folk were not in that top category there. So it means that he has done something that has moved Hassel Folk upstairs. And if House of Folk are seated at the summit of the league, this man has been doing the magic. I mean, he's been with Midiam. I saw those prospects where, I mean, he, he was one of the best coaches in the, on the local scene. He's shown that he could mentor Midiam to a big team. But, yeah, it's a crowd of Folk. Different momentum, different pressure, different tension. But he has done quite well. Let's pay attention to the number of matches won. 13 against 12, just one in there. But it's the draws, as you rightly mm -hmm. said, which Kotoko have drawn more, mm. that could cost them at the end of the day. They need to start winning matches from away from home. Well, another thing Hasso Folk has better than Kotoko, and I'm not saying it is, that is why Hasso Folk are going to win. I'm not saying Hasso Folk are going to win the league. But per the league and the statistics, Hasso Folk has players, upfield players, and they have more players who've scored. who've scored more. I mean, Michel Sapon have three goals. Umar Man have three goals. 
there, there is that Victor Edu with seven goals. Kojo Abi Jr., seven goals. Benjamin Lefutu, four goals. So, so they have a number of outfield players that are spanking in the goals. You go to Kotoko, that is not the case. Mm. You, you, Ghani is having... The uh, over-reliance on Kujo Poku, he left, and now it's... Kwame Poku? Yeah, Kwame Poku. He's, he's gone. And now it's a new boy, it's Kumi. Andy Kumi today, he's there tomorrow. Right. You know, one thing about Andy Kumi is that he's such a good player. I love his pace and the way he reads the game. But if he doesn't have the supply, he has not been consistent because the supply has not been consistent itself. And then when he starts games, he usually misses out I don't know what. So with Kotoko, mm. more players need to chip in. And I mean, get they the need goals. to have consistent players scoring week in, week out. Genfi scores today, tomorrow is not scoring. Gamma scores today, is not scoring. But check has a folk. Victor Edu started it. He has left the mantle to Kojo Abi Jr. If Kojo Abi Jr. doesn't score, Salifu pops up, Futu pops up. And so they are managing it. Okay, now let's move on. And another team that cannot be ruled out of the title race is Great Olympics. Anytime people dispel their chances, they pop up and win. And whenever we think they're about to, you know, break away and get three points, they tend to be the wonder club. You have to give it to them. And this coach has said that there's no way he's given up on a title chase, you know, and uh, his record or his stats also speak volume for what work he's done. This season, Olympics are not being um, chased you know, down the relegation. So they're actually running up. And they're three points from the league leaders. They still have a point to prove. Well, a season for them to always remember. They're having a, a magical season now. A season where we thought they were going to struggle. A season where we thought things were going to be the usual thing. But the Olympics are really, really the surprise team at the moment. Look, this man has worked himself very well and he is the local Black Stars coach. The Black Stars team B is at his feet now. And that tells you he is, you know, if not the coach of the season, one of the coaches of the season. Again, you look at the players Olympics are using. They are not the top stars in the league. But they are playing as a team, they gel well, and they are grinding results. And one thing I've learned about Olympics is that when let's, let, let's talk about, sorry to, mm. you know, not taking the wind out of you. So let's mm. go back. Okay, the goal is going to be scored here by Mudisiru. Mm. Super sub. He's come in and scored three goals. Uh, two of those, they ended up winning. But before he scored, and we'll talk about the jerseys in a bit because, mm. you know, it's, it's our job to point out some of these things so that uh, we're helping with the branding. That's, that's also part of our responsibility. Okay. Let's go back a little bit. I'm sure director will mm. take us back mm. to the incident where, you know, it looked like Awaku stretched his, not an elbow, but his mm. arm yeah. and impeded the um, Allies player. Exactly. Referee waves play on. Advantage. Now, we continues. see it here. We see it here. Look at the left It's arm. raised. And it is, it is way above that level where the referee should have spotted that infringement. We see it here. And it was the entire Allies player in full control of the ball, and Awaku will steal that ball using the, the elbow or the arm. Shoulder to shoulder, and then he ray, he elevates it. it. It is where it could it could probably get into the eye or the head, and uh, you see blood oozing out of somebody's head because the elbow was really strong. So it wasn't shoulder to shoulder. It wasn't shoulder to shoulder. You see, the, you see the elbow was right there, just in front of the, the Allies player. It should have been a free kick. Right. It wasn't given, it and wasn't the advantage was, you know... What happened? And these are the fine margins between getting three points, getting nothing, and getting relegated. But even here, he had work to do. Look at look at the options he had. He still had to take the right decision. And the weight of the pass and the unselfish assist made it a very good goal. Well, well first of all, it is Awako, the genius, the El Matador, who always pops up and makes sure those pockets of spaces are realized by the strikers. Again, he is feeding... Abekwe here. And look, look at him. He saw the run of Abekwe. Brilliant he run. He pushed it before Abekwe could get into the outside position. And for me, that is that is that visionary that we always look out for. Let's take a look at the three Olympics attackers mm. right here. Mm. What is so beautiful about this goal is their movement and the timing. Exactly. The timing where Awako passed the ball was very, very important because if he doesn't pass it perfectly well, the goalkeeper or probably... Abekwe will be in an offside position. So he timed it very, very well. Now, Abekwe has also seen with Asiri on the other side. So look at the pass. When they, they, let us release the pass from Awako, and you see the vision of uh, Abekwe. 
Just as, yes, look, look, look at Abekwe. He's not even looking at Mudasiru. He has already seen him. And, and that's that understanding that, that you want to see between two strikers. And Olympics at that time were playing two top strikers. Could it also be that the inclusion or bringing on Mudasiru, the defenders probably switched off did not pay attention to him, were focused. Look at their positioning. He was left alone, unmarked, easy what, to tap in. What, what, like, if we could go back a little bit, if we could go back a little bit, we'll see where entire, like, the defenders got it wrong. They were all focused on how Awako was going to place that ball. Was he going to go for the diagonal or the square ball? Or what, what was he going to do? Or was he even going to go for goal? Now, if we could roll back a little bit, you'll see the four defenders of entire life all focusing yeah, you see Awako here. Now, He's a let, let's hold man. it here. Look at the three defenders. The, the other one just in front of Mudasiru. He could have realized Mudasiru was just behind him. Because now, his colleague was there. Exactly. And there was one player covering him. But because that player was a shade late, he thought of even covering enough space so that he can turn out the Libro. Tactically, Anna Walker got it spot on because Mudasiru just came on. So the defenders perhaps hadn't adjusted to his presence on the pitch. They slept and they were punished. Exactly. And uh, I, I guess the allied defenders, they also um, went off that moment. The focus wasn't there. They couldn't read in between the lines to see Awaku had stolen that ball. But So Abe Kwe, mm. the inter-allies defender in the middle, mm. slowed down. Mm. And by the time they realized he wasn't going for goal, it was too late. Mudasiru was unmarked. Mm. Just had to tap in. Exactly. And uh, great timing by Mudasiru himself. I mean, in that space here, he could have. I mean, that was the infringement, not noticed by the referee. And you see it here again. And uh, for Mudasiru, in a panic situation, he could have even moved faster before the ball got to, to him at that end there. But he was also calm. He was composed. And that was, look at him. He could have even run faster, move faster. But he, he, he timed it very well. And that was when, you know, you couldn't say he was in an offside position. Great, great, great goal. Another three points for Olympics. They keep the momentum. They are not given up yet. They are yet to play Hearts in a second game. That should be quite interesting. The Phobians also to play Midyama. Uh, we hope to look at the next fixtures for the top four teams mm -hmm. and whether or not the advantage with Hearts playing more of, of their matches at their cross sports stadium will be the deciding factor. Yes, yeah, but let's let's give it to um, Coach Ano Walker and Mudasiru. Um, I mean, Abdul Mudasiru. Look, for a player who has been very inconsistent, he's had a bashing. He been, he's been lambasted, and some of the supporters, including some management members, felt let's dispatch him off the team. It took Ano Walker to say, "I always want him in my team." He knows what he brings, and you see. From Mudasiru, he's 26 years old. He's having his first breakthrough season with Olympics. Mm. He's never played at the highest level like this before. For him, in the last four matches for Olympics, he's he has scored four, um, three goals in four matches. Right. He's getting his confidence back, Dragon. his groove back. If they had dispatched him off, where would he be now? So, thumbs up to Anna Walker for standing his ground and making sure Mudasiru has become a better player. But apart from those three goals he scored, he's, he's a problem for defenders when he's on the pitch because of his size, his runs, and then he takes defenders away for the likes of, you know, Abe Kwe, uh, his brother Samuel, and Awako to do the damage. He is more, more or less like Nicolas Anelka, where his figure, always around the 18 yard box, box is, is, is very disturbing. I mean, he opens the gap, pushes defenders aside, and creates the opening for, for players like Abe Kwe and Ashi Kwe, and probably Glass Awako to strike at goal. And so you always need you know, that, that figure up front to show that, look, he's, he's an excellent player. He holds, he holds on to the ball very well. Just the goals. And for such a player, he needs that momentum, that confidence to, to put the ball at the back of the net. And hey, from the substitute position, he's coming back, reading the game very well, and he's doing what his coach has been telling him. Look at him here. This started it, didn't it? It really started it for him and his confidence since then. I mean, he had no right to do this, but there was something that he said that <laughs> something said he should shoot it and he was confident he would score. I, He's I mean, not looked back. Yes, of course, of course. And uh, he, has, he has nothing to do any more than to look forward because he has been a super sub. He's pushing Olympics. He's making sure Olympics are winning him. He won that game for Olympics. Won that game again for, yeah, for Olympics. Six points. Last Sunday. And That's not for bad. me, precious, precious victories for Olympics. And that man needs thumbs up. Awesome.
You're watching the GPL headquarters right here on the Star Time Channel 247 and Max TV. We have a lot more to tell you and also look ahead to what should be a very fascinating weekend. Again, lots of big matches to come. Week 26 was exciting and we're looking back at some of the key moments of that as well. Now, let's take a look at this. Okay, so this, this incident, again, Olympics at this stage were leading. Mm. But take a look at this. Okay, so, so now let's do a little bit of education here, Yao. Now, the new FIFA rule says that if you are leading and you decide to hold on to the ball deliberately, trying to claw some minutes away, the referee has every option to take a foul against you. But I've also read that it is interpretation. So here is how do you, if a player, mm. okay, mm. he's trying to get a corner, mm. he gets to the corner, mm. he's waiting for his opponent to mm. get closer, so he mm. hits it against him mm. to get the corner. How do you say he's wasting time? Well, the new rule says that. It's interpretation. Yeah, of course. And, and they are saying that. The referees are saying that. And, and, and you, if you read the rules, it said that. The player is deliberately delaying play. What if the player is deliberately looking for the opportunity to get a corner from his <laughs> opposite number? Exactly. Yeah, you are right with your, um, your questions and uh, your argument, okay? But that's the rule. Ex ex the same thing happened when Hazel Folk played against Techima in level one. The ball hit the hand. It was a referee who came back telling us that the, the, the hand was close to the body, it was in a natural position, and that's the interpretation of the law. <laughs> so where was the same referee? Who said it's a... I mean, when when the ball that hit, um, uh, I think it was a J, the Elmina Sharks defender. Right. Nobody came interpreting anything. Right. But again, you see so many interpretations <laughs> coming around. I think the it's, inconsistency it's, yeah, of but, the... But this is the new FIFA rule that... Interpretations, right. When the player deliberately holds up play. Right. The, the word here is deliberately. deliberately. And, and that, that was... Right. A deliberate hold up. Okay, uh, but in that game again, we had lots of uh, interesting incidents and scenarios. One of which was an incident where I think the referee may not have seen it, but the player pushed, you know, uh, well, he slapped, not pushed. This is another one, of course. This is a red card, no, no doubt about it. Penalty and a red card. Oh, I, I'm wrong. <laughs> well, that, that's Emmanuel Ajman Bedou. But hold on. Before that, it looks like Mudasiru may have no. used his elbow. Okay, yeah, let's go back here again. Look at look at Mudasiru first with the elbow to the to the wrist, <laughs> uh, to the um, the 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 um, the the, uh, the midsection of uh, um, uh, the defender, Emmanuel Ajimabedu. Uh, see. So so it was Mudasiru who who was the first offender. Offender, but see, may, not many saw that that elbow or that that that. Look look at look at it. With a with that, that the, ref, the referee was right there. He may not have seen it. Let's he didn't look at the see position it. of the referee. The referee at that didn't time, see he was it. Looking at the watch. He looked at his watch, and he missed it. He so missed you, it. you can't blame the referee okay, on this. Could the assistant line one or line two probably had spoken to the referee about it? He may not have seen it. He had players, at least two players in front of him. He may not have seen that incident. But if they had red card um, penalty, it could have been. It could have been a red card to Emmanuel Ajiman Bedou, and of course. Um, a red card as well, and a penalty. But again, the referees at this well, stage... Sighted. They did not see it. ...should be up and doing. He was looking at it. It was time up. If it was a Kumasi Asante Kodoko versus Ashanti Gold, or House of Folk versus Accra Girl Olympics... And this happened. And this happened. I don't know what will happen. So, we'll are, the we'll referees are doing it. so well, y'all. Yeah, they're doing better. Really, really well. But they are getting pockets of certain decisions wrong. And I think that's where they need to be up and doing. Okay, uh, as I said, big matches coming up this weekend, no doubt about that. But the weekend that just passed, a couple of players really caught the eye, and I think one of them was uh, Tosuche. Mm. W what's so special about him, and where has he been hiding all, the, all this while? Why suddenly he's coming to uh, fruit and he's doing so well in the last few matches? Well, he's a military officer with the Ghana Armed Forces. He's based in Takrade, but he was playing for Sekedi Azakis. He was good. He was that striker who could hold up, you know, hold on to the ball and draw other players to, to join him. Again, he is that player when giving the assist can score. He's good in the head, good at his feet. He can run. Very he, mobile. He has the physicality and the tenacity. And look at him. Here he goes with the header. I'm He's got a good head. Yes, yes. And uh, he, could, he could hold on to the player and also assist. And he's, a, he's a good ball player. I mean, w when I saw him at Brecum Golden City Park, when Wafa dismantled Chelsea, he was running from everywhere. He was creating an assist, and he was scoring as well. So, for me, 
Just his age. He's 28 years old, Yao. Surprising. He scored in the last five matches. He scored four goals for Wafa. And he's also been the game changer for Wafa. Confirm that. 26 or 28? 28 years. Right. 28 years. And uh, he's been in phenomenal form. Uh, you know, I, I spoke to his coach about the Tanner City, how good he has been for the team, and where, 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 where technically is he not up there where, you know, after some few games or some seasons, he could be up there. And he said, look, when I saw him, I realized he can hold on to the ball. He can create spaces. He can score as well. So all that I needed to do is give him confidence and let him know where he must be when a ball is going to be crossed or where the move is being created. And that is where this man has been. He knows perfectly where to be to score goals. And he's always the top man holding on. Since Wafa lost Daniel Lomote, they've not had such a player. And for me, I'm happy for him. Four goals in five matches. He's only scored, he's, he's only played nine matches. They signed him in the second round. Yeah. So it's good for him to, 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 to be up there. And yep. I love the form. Excellent. Yep. Good form. And uh, let's go for another break. When we come back, we'll talk about another penalty that was given in the last round. Which penalty? We'll find out after this short break. Introducing Lucky Mall Ghana. Lucky Mall Ghana gives you the chance to become a millionaire with just a click. Lucky Mall Ghana is a new mobile lottery platform where you can win big. You can win a cash prize of 10,000 Ghana CDs, brand new car, shop ride vouchers, telco airtime, smartphones, curved TVs, MacBooks, laptops, and many other dream items. First, you need to visit www. LuckyMall.com.gh or download the Lucky Mall app from your Google Play Store. I go in, you go in, you go in, I go in. The time has come for all to come together to cheer on our champions, to bring back that love. It's new, it's bigger, and it's better. It's the only league that matters. Oh, one, two, one, and why I share? I'm going to go. I'm going to ask you what you do. I'm going to go for one time. my boys you know do you do know their name they are called flavor boys yes you are you are, you are yet to see more flavor only flavor i'm telling you The Ghana Premier League in high definition on Star Times. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Yes, Justice Blay. My voice isn't there, but it's become iconic. Another yeah, yeah, yeah. But Justice Blay is on a mend. He, he, he won't have any further parts in this season, but he will be back definitely next season stronger. Let's talk about the match between um, Legon City's and Adriana Stars. 2-0, they won. And with the momentum that Adriana has started building mm -hmm. after that classic game against Olympics, 2-0 down, coming back to win, many felt that they would give uh, Legon City's a torrid time and should be able to beat them. But this was the first goal. It could have been... A, 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 a catastrophe for the goalkeeper if he had mistimed his tackle. Jonah Atukui, Atukui, good goal. Yeah, great goal from Jonah Atukui. And you need him. I mean, he's been good this season for cities. 
Jonah Tukwe has shown that promise. I mean, he was great playing for um, Brooklyn Chelsea last two seasons. And since joining Cities, he's been up there. He's one player that you can rely on with his pace, with his trickery. And that's where he has, he has been. And uh, you also love the goals he's been scoring for Cities. And uh, that Tamase, look at... You, you, you always... See him at the right place at the right time. They had chances, because of his space. Cities, didn't they? Yes, they did. They a lot did. of chances to have, you know, uh, taken a comfortable lead. And this is the handball incident and converted. Now, now let's, let's, let's go back to the handball incident again. I mean, if they could roll it back a little bit. I, we want to see whether the player's hand was in a natural position or because we are getting confused here. I mean, l l let's roll back here again. The natural position... I, I mean, okay, let's take a look at it yes. again. The natural position means that your hands are just left where they should be in a, in a, in a match you know, state. Yes, but we, we see well, that incident again. It wasn't like this. It wasn't like that. It was... Just look at him. But he turned. Yes, he did. He did. He, he, he wasn't, you know, raising the arm. Was, well, I mean, let's hold it here. I right. mean, if, you, if he was going to turn, obviously he didn't want the ball to strike the stomach. Yeah, your, your point is very So valid. he could turn. He was... And the arm was not stretched. It was around himself. That's a very good point. So if the arm and the hand was still around the body and he turned and he hit the hand, I thought this ex is explained natural, right. what they were saying in a natural position. In fact, the fact that he, he turned around to perhaps save himself from... I mean, let's look at it here. It was around the natural position. He, he had not moved the hand away from the body. He was only turning because the ball could have struck the stomach. Yep, converted by Joseph Ajay. You see, such interpretations are not... Well, I'm not a referee, but, hey, it's making it more difficult for us to understand the rules of the game. Interpretation, <laughs> interpretation. But um, as I said, we hope to have, you know, referees head Alex Corte coming through to tell us exactly about these things so that the fans are educated. And mm. we all know, at least sitting and watching in the studio, that... Interpretation means that that was a penalty, that was not a penalty. Well, one man who feels that was a penalty, was not, not a, penalty a penalty, is Joe Abu Salam. And he's watching us <laughs> live in Tema. Joe Abu Salam, thumbs up. It was his birthday, what, a couple of weeks ago? Exactly. Yeah, so belated happy birthday to him. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Joe Abu Salam, he's a strong Let's man. talk about another coach who, for a moment, was cleaning everything up. And then he had a couple of uh, setbacks. Yeah, Preko. Mm. Uh, he's bounced back. Midiama, back in the race, are they not? They yeah, are, but yeah, I'm not excited about why, their Why but? <laughs> yeah, because I'm not excited, yeah. I mean, you win four, three, five matches in a row, and you seem there with the early teams, and you were fighting it out with them, yeah. And yeah, Preko suddenly lose momentum and go three matches without a win. It happens to a lot, most of the teams, or a lot of the teams. Except where do now is picking momentum, where he's looking for a consecutive win. Apart from where do. Anna Walker has struggled. We had Barreto getting a defeat, a draw. Now he's got a couple of... So it, it looks like it's a pattern. And Yao Preku now seems to be bouncing back. Boedu is the exception. Hard to vote, coach. The thing is that if you go off around this time and you want to come back, it's by that time, difficult. it will be too late. Some of Boedu might have struggled. Anna Walker might have struggled. But it was not around this moment. This moment is crucial. Yeah. And if Yao Preku wants to keep his job and keep Bidiema close to the league title, he needs to keep momentum. It is consistency. He's he, not there. Even he, he, he needs to beat the Hearts when they meet at their Crossbow Stadium? Is I that mean, a game he has to win? I mean, he has no choice. If he wants to go for the trophy, you need to beat Hearts of Folk. And he must do that in, in open play at a Crossbow Stadium. Mm. And I think, look, it will serve him all good if, if he keeps that consistency. It was, it was, I mean, you, if you have watched that match he played against Ashanti Gould, they nearly drew that match again. Mm -hmm. He should be doing something more better than what he's doing, Yao Preko. Mm. Well, Yao Preko is doing well, but uh, Jude has a lot of confidence in him and believes he should be doing much better. Talking about the top, the middle, the bottom, we'll take a look at the, you know, the log fully, but what about the goalkeeping race? We've not heard... OK, let's take a look at this for the time being. There's no distinction there. Consequent mm. hearts on the same points. There's, the goal difference is very clear. The number of matches they've lost is very clear. Okay. The only thing that hearts have to do is to avoid losing. Okay, like, yeah, let's look at the colors. House of Folk are on top, and that's the yellow, yellow. colored. That's right. and now, you look at number two, number three, number four are colored green. They should add number five in green. Now, Carella? Carella are just four points above the second team. That is Kotoko. 
That's just two games. But that's just a game. Just a game. Yeah, no, so yeah. they are not also out of the race yet, Carella. Mm. If you look at the games Carella are playing, look, Carella could determine who wins the league or they win the league themselves. They will play against um they will play against Olympics, they will play against uh Mediema. So they also have a stake in there. And that's, for a, me... that's another, you know, regional <laughs> mega derby. Exactly. Yeah. But hold on a minute. Dreams FC, mm -hmm. if they win their next game and the teams above them lose or draw, they would also be up onto uh, 44 points. And that would put them in a good position because Midiama on 43. If they lose, mm -hmm. if Olympics lose, Dreams FC, why not? Now, look at this. Karela playing Olympics. It's a big game this, this huge, weekend. Huge. So if Karela should win, they'll go above Olympics. If Olympics should win, they, they try to get closer to, to, to Kotoko and Hearts. Now, Midiama are playing away from home this weekend. And so it's a big game for them. Kotoko are going to Adriana Stars. Tough game. Tough game. House of Folk are playing against Chelsea. At home. And for me, That's House of Folk. Advantage. Between the first five teams, Hearts have the better. Half the cheaper match or probably the, 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 easier. The, the, the easier game. So so it is it, it is the dynamics are so clear. Hustle folk are having an advantage now. Mm. But but Jude, there's another battle. Mm. The battle at the bottom. It's getting crazy now. If we try dwarfs, remember they lost at the disciplinary. Mm. And look at them. They were in there. Mm. They were in a dogfight. But look at what's happened to them. How have they responded? Remember I told you here that they were going to lose that point. Right. <laughs> but How have they responded, Dwarfs? Well, I think they did respond that well, winning that last game. It was important for them after losing three points. But yeah, from 10th position to the 17th position, anybody could be relegated. Mm -hmm. You look at Bechem United on 33. The difference between Bechem United on 10th position, on 33 points, and 11 one less. At, 11, uh, at a 16th position on Four. 27 points. How many points difference? Six points, right? Two games. Just two games. Two Just games. two games and things will change. So if you are even at the 10th position or the 11th position, you are, you, you are still in danger. From the, 20, from the 15th position to the 17th position, it's just two points. If they could change, the, the, the positions could be changing. 11 one that are going away from home. Liberty professionals, and how on earth did Kim Faisal get out of that? Well, they, they've had some impressive results recently. Winning, I, and, yeah, I keep mentioning the consistency. They've won two matches in a row. How on earth did Kim Faisal manage to beat Elmina Sharks at the Indom Stadium? I mean, that is the tenacity, that is the, that is the character, that is the attitude. Mm. But of course, uh, the fans will tell you that the disciplinary committee is ruling uh, against Ibushu Adolf's propelled Kim Faisal up. They need to start winning on the pitch and scoring goals. Well, apart from the, the points being given to um, uh, Lagos Cities. They're up as well, Lagos yes, Cities. Yes. And then they won. Yes, and they won. You see? So that's six points. It's about consistency mm. now. Kim Faisal are out of the relegation zone because they've been consistent in their last two matches. And for me, keep winning. Don't lose. And that will just move you away from the, the, releg the, the Wahala and the mm. relegation zone. Uh, Jude, it's been a while since we heard from your friend um, at... Carella? D.O.C. Taylor. D.O.C. Taylor. What's up? Where's he gone? <laughs> well, he's there. He's banging in the goals. He is the gay, I mean, the king in terms of goals. He is the top he's scorer. He's been out there for so long. And you wonder if it's a done deal with eight games to go. It, it, uh, Kwame Prepara perhaps cannot catch him. As, As Kofi has been off, Amankona has been on and off. And Abagna, well, we've not really seen much of him in the last few games. Well, Hans Kofi is injured, so obviously he's out. Kwame Pepra is there, but has not found the goal-scoring form that he was when he was bagging in the goals for Kim Faisal. In about some many matches since he returned from the local Black Stars, he's managed to score only once, Kwame Pepra. You know what's interesting? Mm. The top four teams do not have a player in there. The top four teams do not have no Kotoko, no Hearts, no Olympics, no Midiama. <laughs> this is Now, odd. check this out. The top scorer for House of Folk is... Victor Edu and Kojo Obi Jr. on seven, seven goals. goals. Top scorer for Olympics is Maxwell Ashikwe, seven goals. Top scorer for Kumasi Asante Koroko was Kwabi Poku. Seven. He's gone. Right. Now it's Ganyu on four. <laughs> He's it's, not a striker. It's not a striker. And so who is bagging in the goal for Kotoko? Good question. For, for, for Midiama, Opokwajima seems good. 
he's been scoring, but he's just around six, seven goals. Hmm. Interesting. Judith Champo, let's do it again on Thursday before you travel. Where's your next stop? Ah, it's, it's not been decided yet, but we could go to Indianasi. This man not. is roaming all over the place. There are lots of matches to look forward to this weekend. Big thanks to Jude Echampo, the prof, and bumper to bumper. Let's do it again tomorrow. Lots of action. Join the breakfast team on uh, Max TV as they bring you the latest as we look ahead as well. On to the um, Europa final. Villarreal, Manchester United, exclusive on Star Times. Bye for now. Wait, TV this. I tell you, someone could buy better TV. Charlie, we could go see chairman. Charlie, which kind of TV be this? The filming quality be late. If you be that, for instance, here, film graph will be massive. Kill that TV. Improve vividness, color intensity of images, truly stunning picture. If you fresh, fresh.